and we're out. Thank you so much. Do you have time to do a, a like ten minute post show thing? Well, first of all, that was a great interview. Thank you. Oh, well, you're very welcome. I I really enjoy this stuff. I've you know it's it's a privilege for me to be able to talk to so many great artists. And you know what really makes it worth it for me is, like I said, I I didn't, never want to be the interviewer that did the um, you know. So tell me about when you did this movie. Yeah, and one more fucking person asked me about how I made slime or my head will explode. <laughs> so it's... Uh, I mean, when I take a shit, it comes out glowing green slimers, you know? It's just like enough and enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you just produce them. There's just slimers everywhere. You can't help Yeah, them. I do need to call Mike, but uh, yeah, if it's only 10 minutes, let's do it. Okay, well, I mean, I, I might as well just... Because the post-show is like just conversation, chit-chat <laughs> after, so we can just make this, unless you said something you don't air. Um... No, I like the, the glowing green turd one. That's a good one. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's important. I forgot, actually, and because normally I'm so candid in these things, I forgot that you, you sent me that warning about kids listening, and I'm just, like, cursing and talking about drugs and sex. Oh, uh, no, it's not. No, it's fine. And, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll probably... Hey, you knew who you were interviewing. Not yeah, I mean, exactly. People. And I... And, like I, I don't like to censor people. I don't like to hush people. That sort of thing. You know, that's bull. I, I, I just, uh, like I was saying before, though, it's like it's really important to me to, you know, I feel every artist that I've talked to, uh, you know, I've, I've had Neville Page on the show, who, you know, he designs in ZBrush. He loves practical effects, right. and he's now he is continually texting me pictures of this miniature that he's working on for a personal project, and. You know, it's it's just the fact that I get to peop, talk to people who have the same enthusiasm and love for this stuff. And of course, you know, when I was a kid, I'm 41 now. When I was a kid, you know, Ghostbusters was like a major thing for me. And I loved when Species came out. I was so thrilled to have another H.R. Giger creature and Return of Living Dead 3 was amazing. I mean, these are all great projects. But what when I think about them, you know, I'm not just fanboying out going like, oh, my God, I love this movie and I need this collectible, that sort of thing. It it was it was the work. I could see the work going into them, you know, and I could watch, you know, back in the day before DVDs, you know, HBO would have like a special about, you know, this is a behind the scenes of this movie. And I'm like, it, it might be a movie I didn't even care about, but I just, you know, if there was an effect in it, I had to see. You know, I had to hear the artist interview and when MTV did This Is Horror that was hosted by Stephen King, I was like, you know, I've got to see this. And so being able to talk to artists with the same enthusiasm that I have who have actually had their hands in it. And you guys are, you know, far more talented in, you know, creating this stuff than I can ever hope to be. But like I said, my my thing was, you know, as a director even if I'm just, I mean, I'm living in a crappy little apartment right now. I was had a nice house in Texas, but we're back in California. Um, you know, just being able to go like, oh, I can build this or I can turn the camera this way and give this illusion, you know, creating that illusion, as George Lucas says, at 24 frames per second. You know, I, I it's just a joy for me. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like what gives me life. I, I mean, outside of my family, of course, but you know, it's, it's fun bringing my kids into this too, going like, here, hold this tentacle or hold this, you know, like watch what we can do. And the kids, right. you know, they love it as well. So again, it's, it's a privilege to be able to, uh, talk to people like you. And, and I want to get that enthusiasm out. Cause I know you, you love it. Well, thank you very much. I also like hearing the sound of my own voice, so it's nice when people ask me intelligent questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you thought they were intelligent. I got a, um, what was it? I, I was going to ask. No, oh, it's just like you. It went. It went out of my head. Um, but uh, oh no, no, I was just going to say, like I'm. I I lived in Texas for five years. I, I lived in. I'm sure you know where Kyle, Texas, is outside of Austin. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, so for the longest time I was doing these interviews, always via, via Skype or now on phone and that sort of thing. But, um, if you're interested, um, in the future, you know, Alec has agreed to it. I'm going to hit him up at the end of next month and Neville has agreed to it. You know, I'm, I want to start kind of doing either round tables or just going to pl people's places of work and, and doing more video content, um, 
you know, and I don't, I've got a Patreon, I've got two patrons, which I probably should have given a shout out to on the show, but, um, you know, I'm not really making any money doing this. It's just, uh, a, a, pro, a passion project while I make my films and that sort of thing. So, um, it, yeah. if, if you are available, I would love to be able to hit you up again. I'd be happy to. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate it. It's an interesting post show, you know. You talk for the interview, and now the post show. I'm. It's just me talking to you. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, well, let me. Uh, I'll let you go. Oh, you want to hear about how I made Slimer? Mm, no, I, I've heard. I've heard the story. <laughs> I've heard it. It's out there. I don't want to. I don't want to give people stuff that they've heard a million times. What I, you know, I, I will say the Kickstarter thing. I helped with the Harbinger Down Kickstarter. Um, it was a great time. It was very stressful. I understand the stress. And uh, like I said, when I, I meant it when I'm going to expedite this episode, uh, get it out this afternoon, and I'll blast it out to people and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, aside from this book, are you, are you going to be like, like what other projects are you you're writing a lot? Do you have a desire to direct? Do you, you know, do you want to make a movie on a cell phone? Do something crazy like that? What's, you know, what are you thinking well, about these days? My short-term plan right now is um, to get through this next 12 days of Kickstarter, get this book funded, and then, of course, I have to do a brutal edit on it um, and design the book with my designers and then get it shipped onto the printers and then fulfill everything. So that's going to take 16 weeks. It's another four months of work. Um, the minute that's done, I'm going to go full blast on Rubberhead TV. I've been working on it with Sony and a company out there called Escape Artist, Todd Black's company. He's an Oscar-winning producer. Uh, we've been working with them for about a year. Wow! I don't think they get. I don't think they get it. They just don't get it. They're trying to shove a square peg into a round hole. And I need to find the right person. And so, what I've done is I've brought two different writers in to help pitch. Uh, and we got really close. You know who Adam Green is? The name is familiar. Uh, he's an amazing writer director, a really good guy. And uh, he did a movie called Frozen, not the Disney one, but one where these guys are stuck on a ski lift for an entire weekend because they go for one last run and it's just like this great Hitchcock suspenseful thing. And he also did a series of four movies, the Patchett movies. Patchett 1, 2, 3, and 4. Victor Collins. Okay, um, yeah. So he's got, he's got a huge following. Um, so I brought him in on the project and, and, and we we tried to, you know, turn it to a square peg for escape artists at Sony and smash it into a round hole and they loved it. And then finally they said, you know, we really like this project but we're not so sure about Adam bring us another writer yeah and so that was awful uh but i did I, I, I worked with another person we went and did a bunch of pitches we're still working with them but again i don't think they get it so i think what's going to have to happen is gonna have to come from my mind my brain because it's my baby you know so after the four months of getting rubberhead volume two out i'm going to sit down and i'm going to concentrate fully on rubberhead television because that will push this through the roof you know, because nobody reads anymore, even though there's a lot of pictures in this book. I, I can't tell you, the, the people that do read it, I'm so thankful to because they get it and they love it. And they've really, really been uh, wonderful at communicating with me about it. Um, and a lot of people read it and, or, or get it and just look at the pictures. And that's fine, too. And that's why we put pictures in it. But television, Netflix, that's where this needs to be as a series, not a movie. And so that's my major focus. I I totally agree with you. I've the, the movie I'm finishing right now. I'm gonna put it straight to Amazon. I'm not even gonna deal with trying to get distribution. I'm just you know I only spent a little bit of money on it. I did an Indiegogo for it, and uh, you know you gotta. I think these days we're empowered to get stuff out in front of people without the producers. Not every time is that exactly. The, the, like Alan Tom did with with both of their movies, and like that, what I'm doing with Rubberhead, the whole Rubberhead series. You know, it's just like. Uh, artists can now take the wheel and hit the gas as strong or as not strong as they like now and do it themselves. Yeah, and it may not always, the you know, it, it may not always show the return, but at the same time, we as artists also have the ability to figure out how to do things on lower budgets so we can, you know, mi minimize our, our expenditure and, and maximize our, our return on it. So, you know, I, I believe that that is the right thing to do. And I, I think this is kind of, going to be a whole subculture there already is a whole subculture of independent filmmaking now because of digital technology where people can do it the way they want to do it and they see it done and uh you know i almost forgot to mention i um i'm finishing up the uh, making of harbinger down uh book 
as well. And there's barely any text oh, cool. in it at all. And we're uh, we're just going to put it on uh, the Studio ADI, like Big Cartel or something like that as a digital download. We're not even, you know, going to try and get it printed or anything like that. Because, again, I just I asked Alec, I said, can I do this, you know? Can I have all the pictures and uh, and, you know, after the Kickstarter and just do this book? And he said, you know, sure, it, it, it'll be your project. You know, he's like, I'm I'm moving on to other stuff. I said, yeah, you know, so it's a lot of fun to put that book together as well. But again, just the ability oh, cool. to, to know that you can create it and put it out there and you don't need anybody's, you know, I need Alex permission, but anybody else's to do that. So, um all right. Well, I want to thank you again so much for your time. And uh, I know you're very busy and this Kickstarter is a, a hell of a ride. It's a hell of a lot of work and you're probably not sleeping all that much. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it really is a full time job. And people a lot of times think of Kickstarter and Kickstarting a project or GoFundMe, any crowdfunding kind of thing. They think of it as, as public begging. It is the opposite of that. You're, it's like making a movie. You're creating a business uh, and, and pimping and pimping and pimping it. And then you, you, you that's that's your job during the Kickstarter. It's a full time job like this. I'm working right now, talking to you. I'm gonna it, get back on the phone to Mike in a second, and then I got to get back on my sculpture that I'm giving away for this thing. But um, and then you got to fulfill it. I mean, it's like making a movie. You get a bunch of crazy people together in a very short period period of time to do something almost impossible, and you do it. It's the opposite of begging. It's a fucking full time job. And you get a lot of people who, you know, they don't, you know, they see Kickstarter and they've been burned by other people's Kickstarters who never, never right. fulfilled or never completed the project or, you know, my own movie is very stressful. You know, I've been on it three years now and I'm constantly doing updates going, no, this is still really happening. I haven't taken your money and, and disappeared. So, you know, it's, I, I get that stress and, uh, you know, I've, I wish you luck, and um, I also uh, want you to know if there's anything else I can do to help out uh, in between my Uber driving or uh, and my many uh, little freelance things that I do, uh, just let me know. Um, I actually have a lot of knowledge and and uh, been pretty good at social media, so if I can be of any of assistance. All right, cool. Well, anyway. just, I mean, the biggest thing you can do is help get the word out there for volume two right now. Okay, well, the show's going to be out this afternoon. I'll send you an email with a link uh, when it is. And uh, again, thanks again, and, and best of luck. Keep doing that great work. All right, thank you very much. All right, take care. Okay, you too. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. All right, so that's the end of the show. And uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, and, man, what a great interview i gotta say steve johnson uh i have been told that he is a very charismatic and good individual and he did not disappoint so uh thank you all to my patreon supporters for listening tuning in my support uh, i'd like to give a shout out to tj basham and Derek hunt for being uh my patreon supporters at the moment uh, I hope more people will join you guys and uh, we will be back with more practical effects, interviews, other podcasts, tutorials, and live streams.